Hey guys, I wanted to uh, show you my Luger today. Um, decided to take this guy out today and uh, thought I would make a short video of it just to kind of give you a close up and show you some of the details of uh, uh, my 1937 Luger. Um, last time I showed you the my some of my other pistols in this case, uh, I, I brought out my P38 again. Um, so the P38 replaced the Luger, basically, for the German army, um, and it was phased out in 1938, so um, that's kind of what we went over last time, and uh, this is a 1937. Um, does, that does not mean that they, you know, stopped making the Luger uh, pistol in 1938 when it was phased out. They continue making it to 1941, I believe. Um, you know, all of you that know about Lugers know that you know there's different variations they call them the black widows or the black grips you know the kind of later Lugers um, this is kind of in between you know um, 1937 this is before Germany invaded Poland in 1939 um, but you know this is a very good example of basically when they were still making uh, pistols and they look like work of works of art you know and um, this is one example is it's just you know in really really good shape uh, and what's really cool about this one is uh, it came with this holster and it's a 1937 holster which matches a year perfectly which uh, I kind of looked at the history and it, it you know it seems to be correct um, it pretty confident that you know it came together the only thing I mean it came with an extra mag too the only thing that I you know wish I had and I know everybody desires is to have a uh, Luger with matching magazines, you know, doesn't everybody want that? Um, there's some guys that do have them. Um, there's a lot of fakes out there. Um, you know, people will uh, uh, grind that off, you know, and try to fake and match the serial numbers. Um, but if you pay attention to the detail, you, you'll know right away if, if they're not real. I don't have matching magazines, but it did come with two original World War II magazines, which is pretty cool not bad uh, but what I like about this Luger 2 is a uh, it's a two digit serial number which does not in any way make the gun I don't think more valuable but I just think it's neat um, you know most of the time you see a four digit uh, serial number you know in the thousands and this one's serial number 89 um, so it's kinda cool uh, all matching serial numbers except the magazines like I said um, but I mean the condition of it, you know, for being so old and being from uh, 1937 uh, is really, really cool, really, really good. I don't think it was used um, very much, uh, if any, really. I mean, it has some holster wear, a little bit in the front, but other than that, it's in really immaculate shape. Uh, so let's see. Let's get some of the close-ups. Uh, hopefully, my camera will zoom in a little bit here on the on the waffen umps and some of the firing proofs uh so it, this one is still has the kind of droop wings that the uh, germans would put on their earlier guns you know and then they faced those out and they went to the straight wing eagle uh this one's uh, uh 63 which is a uh, a mauser um uh luger so s 42 1937 you can see the Germans would mark everything uh, you know they would put the serial number on just about everything um, back here um, you know you have on the safety even on the safety lever um, everything 89 89 uh, the disassembly the, this le lever right there um, the grips match uh, took it apart and, and they match so anyways really good example I'll feel strip it real fast so you guys can see some of the internals um, it's basically really easy to fill strip um, Lugers were fairly simple uh, but yet so complex I mean the machinery and the machine process that they have to have to machine something you know quite precise for that time is is incredible I mean the tolerance says for this toggle I mean it does not move in there 
you know, but yet it has to function. Um, so to be able to re repetitively do that time after time, um, it's pretty amazing for that time. Obviously that co cost a lot to do that sort of thing, so obviously they decided to go with something uh, a lot cheaper to manufacture like the p38 but man they would they would serialize the trigger right there again you know I don't want to say that I'm an expert in this because there's people that know so much more um, on these Lugers um, I just like to collect World War II uh, firearms I think they're they're very neat um, and I think when you get to pieces like this uh, they're not only an investment but man they're just almost like works of art um, if you preserve them and, and keep them well um, so just showing you the insides and this actually when you completely disassemble it um, a way you can tell that uh, your your fork on your barrel is still good uh, it will actually function just like a tuning fork so if you take out the toggle mechanism um, and, and you slightly hit that fork against something, you'll hear it ring just like a tuning fork. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if it's cracked in any way, it won't, it won't make that sound. So that's a good way of checking it. You have the toggle pin here, which is also serialized. Um, and, I mean, these things to take apart are fairly easy. Um, I'll just... Take that pin out here, and then I'll show you. Lighting is not very good, and I apologize for that. Kind of makes it rough to see with um, with the type of lighting that I have. But I wanted to kind of have it where you can see the serial numbers. Um, the way that that works is you can see the firing pin being uh, pushed back right there. Um, on the toggle mechanism and man if my camera would focus right anyways uh, the serial number on the fire and ping is there which matches 89 and this is actually very easy to you can actually almost do that with with your finger um, you press that or you put a, a screwdriver and you turn it and basically those little uh, tabs right there keep it locked in um, so then you undo that and the fire and pin comes up so 89 so again this is just you know to tell you that if you are serious on buying one of these um, you know make sure you feel strip and you check everything because if you have just one number that does not match um, it affects the value quite a bit um, and you know that that's from what I see you know out there could be wrong there is exceptions out there um, but you know the more um, you kind of look and and investigate and try to find you know not only online but in books if you have an all matching serial number it's it's a lot more valuable uh, and of course if you have matching magazines um, it'll be it's worth a lot more um, but People are paying crazy money for these things. Um, you know, the value, I guess, it's in what people are willing to pay. And unfortunately, there's people that have a lot of money out there that are willing to drop crazy amounts of money on, on uh, you know, these collectible firearms. So, anyways, just wanted to show you uh, some of these uh, uh, toys that I have. Something that, you know, that you want to consider if you never feel strip a Luger is... This little lever here, you want to make sure that, that that falls in. There's like a fork in there. You want to make sure that falls in there. Um, or else you're going to have a pain in the butt to uh, put your Luger back together. So, let's take the cover here. Uh, let's see if we can put it back. And that's it. There it is. Um, sorry if I didn't uh, safety check it first, but um, I'm under impression that if you're going to have a firearm and you're going to upload a video to YouTube, 
um, you know, you shouldn't be playing with loaded guns anyways, so um, if I'm putting this video up, it's because everything went well, right? Uh, so here is my 1937 uh, Luger. You know, other guns that the Germans use where, I mean, there's a lot of them, but, you know, this is a VZ-27 or CZ-27 um, that was not really, I don't know, I wouldn't consider an officer's pistol, but uh, Czechoslovakia was overrun by the Germans, and they basically took over their uh, factories and manufacturing, and, you know, they continue producing the guns that the Czechs were making, but basically under the um, the German uh, supervision for the German war industry. Um, so Albert Speer was uh, really good at uh, taking over uh, other factories and using it for the war effort. And uh, you can see Waffenfabrik. This was made in Prague. Uh, I won't. I won't do a review on this, but you know, there's there's a lot of German pistols out there um, that you can look at, and uh, for sure, a Luger is one of the most collectible ones, and that's what people uh, want. So, anyways, I better stop ranting. Uh, my videos are usually pretty long, and I hate that. So, uh, before I bored you guys, I'll let you guys go. But Hope you enjoy the video, and if you have any comments, let me know or questions. Thanks a lot.